When it comes to deploying ArcGIS Enterprise in your Microsoft Azure, there are a few requirements that you might want to check before proceeding forward. The foremost is to have a Azure subscription. The second would be to obtain a license file for Azure ArcGIS Server and ArcGIS Portal from my Azure site. And then the third and um, important thing is to consider if you want to reconfigure a virtual machine and deploy ArcGIS Enterprise there or use Cloud Builder. Cloud Builder is a software that you install in your local machine to make the process of deploying ArcGIS Enterprise easier. And finally, it helps to have a SSL certificate from a certificate authority. Uh, it's optional. You can do a self-signed certificate, but it's always good to have a CA approved SSL certificate. So let's jump right into our Microsoft Azure portal. The first thing you want to do is go to the marketplace and search for our GIS Enterprise version that you are interested in deploying. And where it says want to deploy programmatically, go to get started. And make sure that it's enabled the programmatic deployment is enabled in your computer. If it's not, enable it and save it. After that, let's move on to Azure's website to download the Cloud Builder. Now, because in this video, we are going the ArcGIS Enterprise Cloud Builder route, let's go to Azure's website, find the correct version, download it and install it. And it's a pretty, pretty easy installation. After that, let's sign into Azure. Let's sign into our Azure. And then because we are trying to deploy Access Enterprise, we go with deploy a new site. Now there are different Access Enterprise roles that you can go with because this is a test machine and because ArcGIS Enterprise is the basic setup, we'll go with that. Now, you can select a resource group here. You can create a new one if you want to, or you can just go with the one that you already have. Now, a resource group in Azure is a container that holds related resources like virtual machines, subnet, gateway, and, and other resources. So moving forward, let's choose the access enterprise email that we want. For now, we're going to 10.7.1 and let's choose the location where we want this virtual machine to be in. I'm going with the West US and you will have to give a domain name. I'm going with test. Azure. It helps to give your own ARM resource name. Going with that. Hit next. Now, since you already have, I expect you already have a portal license. Browse to that. If you already have a server, server license, browse to that and give a good username and password. And it helps to give a proper username and password because later on, if Azure doesn't like it, you'll just get an error. Um, Cloud Builder might not catch the problem with your username, username and password. So it's always good to come up with a username and password that's also, that is also acceptable by Microsoft. Done with the site administrator and access service account username and password. Hit next. Once you give a machine administrator username and password, you have the option to create a machine. And uh, you can do so by clicking here. You can choose between SDD, SSD, or standard SSD, and then there are machine type, what course you want, how many gigs of memory do you want. 
the sizes of disk and various other things. I'm just going with the default here. And then give the time zone and uh, a name to your virtual machine. I want to enable remote desktop because that's how I'll be connecting to this virtual machine later on. Now, when it, when it says virtual network, you can go with whatever you already have. Hopefully you have a virtual network provided by your IT or you can create a new one. Give it a name. This is going with this address space. So I'm going with 10 dot address space, leaving everything default and create. It creates a virtual network for you. Once the virtual network is created, hit close. It's going with the default, hit next. And now um, it, it access you the option for RGS data store. You can go with relational tile and spatial temporal. Um, for now, I'm not going with the spatial temporal because it's for a geoanalytics server and that's not what I want for now. Hit next. Now these are the storage account that you might have already configured in your Azure. Um, just going with one um, and I don't want Azure monitoring. And I don't want Azure SMB for now. For the content store, hit next. And then if you have a certificate authority issue certificate, this is where you would add that. I'm going with self-signed certificate for now. Now I'll hit next. Now in here, you have the option to generate a cost estimate. And Azure does that for you. And this is, of course, um, a tentative prices that might fluctuate based on if you close your virtual machine, say at the end of the day, um, or if you add more storage, this price kind of change. But I chose three sixty two dollars and eighty cents for me, uh, which is okay for now. Um, I also save the summary of the of the deployment, and just in case if I need that in future and also you can programmatically deploy the whole thing um, and for that you would need the automation artifact and go ahead and do that if you want to and after everything is done just hit finish now the deployment is in progress and it will take an hour or even for me it has taken more than an hour um, and many a times I have received errors like this where it says the operation failed for various reasons and then you just go back, fix the error and deploy um, Enterprise once again Azure. So I'll meet you after the deployment is done. Hopefully I'll, I'll not get any error. Okay, so it looks like Access Enterprise was successfully deployed on Azure and we get this operation completed result. Um, we can remote desktop to the virtual machine right from here. And it should, yeah, it talks about certificate because I use a self signed certificate. But once I do that, um, it gives me access to my um, remote computer, which should have installed all the ArcGIS Enterprise component. So there should be a ArcGIS server, portal, data store. I don't see web adapter and I might have to do that for one for portal, one for server, but that's beyond the scope of this video. And uh, I can close this window now and it should give me now this would give me the portal URL and the server manager URL which I can access by clicking those links uh, 
we still have to set up ArcGIS Enterprise site. Um, same with server site, but again, setting them up is uh, is out of scope of this video. Uh, finally, let's go to our Azure portal and look at the virtual machine. And right there, you can see the new virtual machine that we just deployed with ArcGIS Enterprise in it. Thank you for watching the video.